right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Jessica Ellison, teacher educator with the Minnesota Historical Society. And we are here today with Ray Amy, who is the author of Food Will Win the War, which is a book published by the MNHS Press. And I'm also here with my two kids, Scarlett and Lachlan. And we made one of the recipes from Miss Amy's book. It was the Easy Herbert Hoover World War I cake. And so we are going to ask Miss Amy, some questions today um, about that particular recipe. So, hello, Miss Amy, how are you? I am fabulous and great to be with you guys. I'm so glad you made that cake. It's one of my favorites. It was really fun. So, um, we're going to just ask a few questions that the kids had um, about the recipe. So, Lachlan, do you want to go first and speak up right into the microphone? Um, we have to use gloves in the cake. Do you have to use cloves in the cake? That's a really good question. Cloves are one of those spices that have a really, really strong flavor, right? So while the people used cloves a lot back in 1918, which was when this cake was developed, if you don't like cloves, it's like any other recipe. You can adjust the spices and seasonings to please yourself. But I always think it's kind of interesting and fun to make an old recipe, and I've worked with old recipes a lot. I think it's, a, it's kind of interesting to make them with the original seasonings first, and then you can see what it tasted like for the people back then, and then you can change it up and put in other seasonings like you know nutmeg or Orange zest would be nice in this recipe because it has a lot of raisins. And then you could, you know, save a slice from the first batch and save a slice from the second batch and, you know, do one of those blind tasting things and see which one you like best. Great. Thank you. Great. Okay, I'm having trouble hearing you, Scarlett. Maybe you need to speak into the microphone a little bit better. Why did it last so long so it could be sent to soldiers? Is that your question? Yeah. That's another really good question. What happened during World War I and other wars too, but World War I was that a lot of young men went off to training camps in the United States during the summer of 1918. And then during the fall of 1918, a great many of them were sent overseas to fight the war in France and Germany, and they were stationed in England. And so, of course, all their moms were saying, oh, I have to send something so he'll have something to eat, because certainly they aren't feeding him well enough in the army bases. Well, they really were feeding them well in the army bases. But one of the big ingredients in this recipe is what? It's raisins, right? And you cook the raisins with water and you make this really delicious and thick paste kind of thing. Did it look like, like paste to you guys? Mm -hmm. And that takes the place of fat in this recipe because there's very little fat in it. And because it has the moisture from the raisins, it will continue to stay fresh if you wrap it well and if you can keep it cool. And in the fall, of course, when they're shipping things, it would be cooler temperatures. But it's like a fruitcake. You guys ever have fruitcake at Christmas time? No. Oh, fruitcakes are fabulous. <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's a cake with a, with a lot of fruit in it because there's all that fruit. And the fruit is, is preserved the way raisins are preserved. It lasts longer. Sometimes fruitcakes last for years. I don't think this raisin cake would last for years, but I've had it last for a couple of months, actually, well-wrapped and in the refrigerator. Enough to get overseas. Enough to get overseas. Right, okay. And once the package got there, don't you think that the soldiers would share it with all their fellow soldiers so it would be gone in a flash? Mm-hmm, yep. Homemade, there's nothing like homemade goodies. Absolutely. All right, Lachlan, do you want to ask your next question? Speak up. Why did it say butter or lard? Okay, that's one something that I did in the recipe. What I do with old recipes is I try to, to, you, to make them, to write the recipes so that people can make them today easily in our kitchen. And lard was a common fat back in 1918, and especially you know, on farms where a lot of the soldiers came from. So everybody had lard around and you know what lard is it comes from pigs right so mm -hmm. not everybody today has lard 
it's kind of hard to get. And some people think it's, you know, just don't want to eat lard for a variety of reasons. So I gave people the choice to use lard or butter because most everybody can get butter. And what did we use, kids? Do you remember? We use, well, we use Crisco. Ah, yet a different fat, which mm -hmm. is a vegetable, because mm -hmm. that's solid vegetable fat. And Crisco was invented, I think, in 1912. So okay. it would have been coming into popularity about that time as a good alternative that keeps fresh easily, was not taken from animals, which we were trying to conserve with lard and, and um and butter use during the war. Everybody volunteered to conserve food. It was really uh, an effort by just about everybody in the country to take part in the war effort by doing what they could do in their kitchen so that the food could be sent to our allies overseas, people in England and France, and also to feed the soldiers who were now in camps as opposed to sitting around the kitchen table. Well, and we, we talked as we were making about making do exactly. um, because when we made the recipe the other day we didn't have any brown sugar ah. we only had white sugar mm -hmm. and so we used the white sugar instead of brown sugar and we talked about different ways people had to make do with what mm -hmm. they had exactly yeah and that was the the big part of the way that people could join the food conservation war effort mm -hmm. which is what everybody not everybody, but most people signed a pledge and said, I will do everything I can to conserve all my food so that we can win this war. Absolutely. All right, Scarlett, you got one last question. Um, was this a dessert food? Was it a dessert food? Well, it could be. Mm -hmm. It could also be a snack food because it has a lot of raisins in it, as we talked about. Yeah. Um, it could be, oh my gosh, the package just got here. I have to eat this right now, <laughs> kind of food. And actually, it's the kind of thing that I think you, I think it makes really good toast in the morning, sort of as an alternate to muffins. It has that kind of flavor profile too. So it's not as sweet, I don't think. Well, you tell me what you think. I don't think it's as sweet as like a chocolate cake with an inch of frosting on it. So we could like think it's a health food, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just still does have a lot of sweetness to it. But with that amount, with, with the sugar and the sweetness from the raisins, sugar also gives you energy. And if you were training to be a soldier and you were marching up and down and you had a rifle on your soldier, shoulder and you were doing a lot of preparation so that you could be in tip top shape, it would be good to have, you know, some nice energy, you know, kind of like an energy bar, only better because it's homemade. That's right. That's right. A 1918 version of an energy bar. Kind of, kind of fits. It would be interesting to do a nutritional analysis and see. Yeah. 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 but homemade because those are the best things absolutely i'm so glad you guys made this recipe it was fun wasn't it fun yeah yeah we had a good time and it was great to to use a recipe that people used 100 years ago when there are so many similarities in a lot of ways to the world we're living in now and the world um around world war one so mm -hmm. it was it was great for us perfect so thank you so much for taking the time with us today. And um, I'm excited to try some of those other recipes in Food Will Win the War. So if you have any suggestions. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, one that, that I like is um, the rice au gratin, which is kind of like mac and cheese. Uh -huh. Only it's rice instead. Oh, we could try that, kids. Yeah. yeah. Right? We have rice and cheese. It's, it's really good, and I think it, it's nice that, it, I mean, it, it also, you know, sort of turns into a hot dish because you can put other things in it um, nicely, you know, like a little leftover chicken, a little leftover ham, got some peas rolling around that you need to get rid of, toss those in too. It's a, it's a really nice recipe. It's, it's hard to pick. There's so many that I really, really do like, but if you like red cabbage, 
Yeah. There's a, the, the victory cabbage in there is the best braised cabbage recipe ever. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> we, we will give that one a whirl. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Miss Amy Kids. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It was fun. And you take care. Yeah, you too.